this field for 33 years, and uh, it's been a pleasure to work with colleagues and friends like Tom Tanzi and Susanna in the process. Um, and this has been a, a long journey. Um, and, and when I started out, um, kind of similar to what Susanna said, the uh, the miracle of solar uh, photovoltaics really captured my attention when I was a, uh, in undergrad school and decided that that's uh, where I wanted to go, where what I wanted to do, and decided that I would be stubborn and make a career out of it. And uh, for the first 10 years of my career, it was pretty uh, pretty rough going uh, to, to try to make a career out of it. I, wor- I helped start the North Carolina Solar Center in 1988 at North Carolina State University, where I was uh, in my graduate program, and uh, uh, installed a photovoltaic system there and in the process had great difficulty uh, having actually got the system donated by the utility who had been testing it for about four years. Uh, Then the utility said that they hadn't tested it long enough and that they needed more time before they interconnected it to their grid, which was clearly not true, um, but it it was a roadblock. And so as Tom mentioned as well, he's been dealing with many roadblocks over the last uh, 15 years in the solar world. Um, I started my roadblock over 32 years ago and uh, decided that I would spend uh, my career on making this technology something that would be, uh, that had its, its day in court, had a chance to do what it could do um, and perform the way um, it was intended to perform. And so that's really what got me started. And in the first 10 years of my career, worked on utility interconnection rules, which became um, the the main uh, process that we use today. And um, I moved to California in 1998 uh, to help training to train uh, local building officials and contractors about grid connected solar because nobody had ever heard of that before. And um, uh, in that process. I became uh, the technical facilitator for Rule 21 in, in the year 2000, um, and so helped uh, facilitate and um, make that, that rule, which was the California Interconnection Rule, uh, an effective rule that solar could be installed under in any, any other distributed generation. And that, that particular rule has become the basis and the guide for all other interconnection rules in the United States and uh, in California alone is interconnected over a million systems and well more than a million more of those throughout the rest of the United States based on rules that are very, very similar to it. Um, And also was involved in the code making uh, process for the National Electrical Code uh, and more recently with the residential and building codes uh, related to solar and energy storage. And so Energy storage is now uh, becoming a bigger area. When uh, when I started in California, all systems had energy storage in them because the products that were on the market uh, included energy storage. And it was back in the Y2K era where people wanted backup power because they were afraid of the grid falling apart. Um, we are now in a situation where it's actually far more likely that the grid could fall apart. and um, um, rather than just being something that might happen, this is probably something that will continue to happen. And I live in an area where, in Northern California, where we have wildfires on a regular basis, uh, as many of you know who watch the news. But um, uh, And in my own community, uh, last year we had a wildfire sweep through our community, and several of my neighbors lost their houses and so over the last two years, we've had probably two dozen power outages that were planned. Um, and so the need for backup power, um, especially in this uh, increasingly electronic age, um, is has become a lot more important. And so energy storage um, has become more important. But uh, energy storage without a power source, um, without solar energy, is like a day without sunshine. So... 
Uh, you got to have the solar to go along with the energy storage. Otherwise, you run your battery dead and you got nothing to charge it back up with. So, so these two technologies, along with um, the third technology, which you've already talked about, which is uh, electric vehicles, those three technologies will be inexorably linked together for the foreseeable future and will uh, definitely play a major role in improving our environment um, and uh, making life better for everyone. And so uh, one of the first courses that we're going to we're going to deal with uh, is, is a course related to energy storage and solar um, and multi-mode inverters and, and technologies that are uh, here on the market today and will be progressing through a variety of technical issues in uh, Enzo space and look forward to it.